Okay, Kate, thanks for agreeing to demonstrate the uh, cannula insertion. So can you talk us through what we would do? Absolutely. The first thing that we need to think about again is our PPE. When you're undertaking cannulation, you should always do your appropriate hand hygiene, don your white apron and your blue nitrile gloves. But for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm just going to wear the blue gloves. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to show you the equipment that you would need for, for cannulation. And you can see that that is all on a clean tray here. Okay. So the first thing obviously you need is a cannula and you would choose an appropriate size cannula for the, for the purpose of uh, what you need it for. Um, you would then need, obviously need something to clean the skin with and you can see that that is the chlorhexidine wipe. So it needs to be, for cannulation, it must be chlorhexidine and alcohol yes, wipe? Yes, it must be. And we commonly use the, the, the Clinel wipes within this organisation, but as long as it's got the chlorhexidine and the 70% alcohol okay. um, in it, and it's because the device is staying in. The other things that you need is a flush. So for that, you would need your 10 ml syringe, your 0.9% saline flush. And we've already checked the we've expiry already checked date. that. And a needle to draw the, the flush up with. Okay. The other thing that you would need to attach to the cannula once you've inserted it is a single extension needle free access device, which we will prime with our saline prior to starting the procedure. Okay. Finally, you need a dressing to secure okay. the cannula. And we've got our tourniquet as well that we will use. And it must be a disposable tourniquet that we use. Before starting, the best thing to do is to have everything prepared. Okay. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do, okay, is to prepare my flush. So I'm going to open my syringe. So peel the syringe pack open. Peel, peel your uh, needle pack open and attach the needle and syringe using a non-touch technique. All right. You then want to draw up your saline. And you can see here that I've got five mils of saline, which is absolutely adequate for flushing a cannula. But you're still using the 10 ml yes, syringe? and that's to reduce the pressure within the cannula itself. Okay. Okay. So, drawing up the saline. Pull back to get rid of your air bubbles and then... Activate on a hard surface your safety device. Okay. Remove your needle. Mm -hmm. Pop that in your sharps bin. I see that. Okay. And then what you want to do now is attach this 10 ml syringe with your 5 ml of saline to your needle free access device and prime this device. Okay. So you again, you peel your pack open, okay, just to reduce the risk of any contamination. And then you can see at this end is the end with the bung on it. And this is where you attach your, okay. your, your syringe. So that just screws on? It just screws on. Okay. It's okay. With a, you push in and then you give it a good half turn till it locks. Okay. Okay. And then what you do is that you gently push through the saline using the, the syringe plunger until you can see the saline at the very end of the device there. I see that. Okay. Activate your clamp. And then pop this back into the sterile packet, okay? And that just reduces again the risk of any contamination of your, your needle free access device. And so just place that on the tray there. Okay. Okay. The next thing you want to do is prepare your dressing. So what you do is you basically just peel open your dressing, okay? And then just keep that in your tray so you're ready to use it. And then finally, if you just open up your cannula, again, just keep that in its sterile packaging until you are ready to use it. So that non-touch technique of using the sterile packets yes. to maintain the sterility Absolutely. of the contents. Absolutely. So now that we've got everything prepared, we can now think about decontaminating the skin. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to apply my tourniquet in exactly the same way as I did when I was demonstrating venipuncture. So making sure that you have two ends at one side, okay? So you can release it quickly at the end. Feel for a vein, you're looking for that nice bouncy vein and give the area a good clean. 
all right, using your Clinel or your chlorhexidine and alcohol wipe. What's really important is for you to think about how long your tourniquet is going to be on for because you don't really want it to be on for any longer than a, than a minute. Okay. So again, give the area a good clean. And so your lattice that pattern. lattice pattern again. For your 30 seconds. And you allow that to dry. Okay. okay. And you pop that in your, your clinical waste. Okay. Once that is dry, we're now ready to, to start the cannulation process. Okay. So if you tip your cannula out into your hand, and then what you want to do first is flatten the wings. Okay, I can see you doing that. Can you see that. me doing that? Okay. The easiest way to hold your cannula to ensure that all sections are initially held together is to hold it in a C shape. Okay. okay. So you can see that I have my thumb at the white bung at the end and my index finger over the blue hub. Okay. So that's creating the C shape. And that's there. creating the C shape. Okay. okay. And then you unsheath your needle. Okay. What you should see, if you're holding it correctly, again, is that open beveled edge pointing, pointing to, the, to ceiling. the ceiling. Okay, so it and comes that's what you want to see. Packaged like that. Absolutely. Okay. Now that I've cleaned this, I'm not going to touch it again because that means that I would have contaminated the site. Okay. So I'm going to use my dominant hand, okay, to go in at a 30 degree angle. Okay. Okay. And what you should see if I'm in the vessel is blood appearing in this chamber. Here in the flashback back. chamber. Okay, so okay. that's your first flashback. Okay. Okay. So 30 degree angle, I've pierced the vessel. And can you see I the blood see appearing the in that chamber? there, yes. Yeah. Okay. What's really important in this stage is that you change the angle. Okay. What you want to do is to flatten down ever so slightly and then reposition your hands. Okay. With my left hand, okay, so my non-dominant hand, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch the back of the device there. And with my right hand, I'm going to basically push this hub forward. So essentially the two parts, the two components of the cannula are separating. So you're advancing the cannula off the needle. Absolutely. Okay. And what you'll see, if I'm successful, is our second flashback travelling up, up the cannula. Okay. Do you see that oh, there? I, see, I do see you that. See the yes. blood coming up the chip there, and you, and can, you can see just how they're see it at the first, the, the other flashback chamber. Absolutely. So you can see that there's blood in the chamber at the front there. Okay. And the and needle you can see hasn't the, moved. Yeah. Yes. Really important that you stabilise the needle where it is. Yes. Because if you push it any further, you might go out the back of the vessel. Okay. Okay. So now that my cannula is now fully advanced into the the vessel, and I have my second flashback, I'm essentially ready to take the needle out now and attach my needle-free access device. Okay. Okay. One way to reduce the risk of backflow of blood is to put one of your fingers above the cannula, okay, to, to basically occlude, occlude the vessel temporarily. Okay? okay. So one finger there, one finger on the cannula to secure it, take your tourniquet off, and then take your needle out. Okay, so that's like one, two... And the tourniquet three. is three. Take your needle out, pop that in the sharps bin. You can see that there's a safety device there that's automatically activated. Yes, yeah, so the tip of the needle is covered. Yeah. And then what you want to do, attach your needle free access device onto the end. The next stage is then to secure the device. And that is where I'm going to use my cannula dressing. And in this instance, I'm using what we call an IV3000. You can see on this dressing that there is numbers and that tells you what order you should take the different components of the dressing off. Okay. Okay, so number one is your securing devices or securing strips. So I'm going to take one strip off and pop that on the wing at the side. Okay, and it's really important that when we're using these securing devices, we have them running parallel, parallel to the, the, the cannula and we don't crisscross them over the puncture site. Oh, that would obscure the puncture yes. site then, wouldn't it? And it's important that we can see that for signs of um, infection. Okay. And it is really important we use these securing devices or securing strips to reduce the risk of the cannula moving underneath the dressing. Okay. So that's number one. And then if you hold the end of it, number two is taking the back off and you basically just feed this round. Okay. 
and it's really important that you can see the puncture site through the transparent part of the dressing. So it's right round the, the yes. hub of the, yes. the cannula. And then number four is taking the back end off. Okay. So you can see that it's nice and secure, but yet you can see the puncture site quite clearly. And then lastly, we have a date and time strip that we can, if we use them, we can pop on the side of the cannula dressing. Again, really important, we don't obscure the puncture site with that strip, okay? The last thing we want to do is to flush the device, okay? So this needle-free access device is all primed. So what we do is we unclamp and then we use what we call a push-pause technique. So we push in half a mil and then we stop, half a mil we stop, half a mil we stop. And that's just creating a positive pressure for flushing the device. And then... And a turbulent flow, And a turbulent flow, yeah. And then we pop the clamp over and then disconnect your syringe. And the flush should go in very easily. If you feel any resistance at all, there's an issue with the cannula and you should go back and, and reassess that. Okay? Thank you. Do you have any questions about that process at all, Lynn? No, I don't. Just a few things that are quite yeah. similar to the venipuncture, just to sort of summarise the, the Think 30, the lattice pattern for cleaning. Um, but then it's this, you know, the same 30 degree angle and the skin to bin. Mm -hmm. and all of those are the same yeah. thing. But a few more po points to consider when we're doing the cannulation, for sure. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Thank Kate. You. Thank you.